Now I've not ever looked to see, does the Gigabyte B450 DS3H actually support 4700 G's? It does. Alrighty guys, so we've got a system and thank you Gigabyte for being awesome in terms of supporting all these generations of CPUs, especially the APUs which sometimes are hard to find support for. But did we do so cost effectively? Well, no, not really because that HP system that we pulled the 4700G out of cost in and around $550 to $600. So yeah, that's pretty steep for the CPU, although you really can't find them. So I guess you can make the claim of, well, you know, hey, this is how you can get this CPU versus not get it. I think the only other way to get one of those CPUs is out on uh, AliExpress or eBay where there are, they are charging that amount of money. So yeah, I don't know, it's a wash. But the good thing here is we now know that we have a system that we can put it into being a motherboard that supports it. So lucky for us, we still have our 3400G system that we got sitting here right in front of us. Just swap the CPU and away we went. Now, if you want to copy what I'm doing here and you either one, have a 4700G on hand by some means, I'm not real sure how, maybe you bought one of the HP systems, but you want to take the rest of the build knowing that you can transplant that CPU. I'll have links for that in the description below that you guys can go check out and make your purchases. But now the great thing here is we have a system that we've unlocked the CPU, meaning we can apply XMP profiles we can do the overclocking. So let's get into just that. The next part of this video is I'm going to show you and share with you guys the template I use to do the overclocking on this system. And then at the end of that, we're gonna follow that up with some benchmarks. And lastly, how it sits and how it performs with the maximum overclock in this system. Let's get into it. So basically kind of just starting off where we were, say with the 3400G video, if you watched that, the Gigabyte motherboard is a little finicky in how you apply voltage, but we'll get into that in just a moment. So this is basically the first screen you're met with. We're gonna go into advanced frequency settings and everything is at its stock default right now. As we can see, nothing applied, no XMP. So first thing we wanna do is we wanna plug in 43 here on the CPU clock ratio. And what that does is it basically boosts the CPU up to 4.3 gigahertz. Technically, the boost clock will go all the way up to 4.4 gigahertz, but what I've noticed in gaming, it doesn't quite get there or hold. So, and actually to hold 4.4, 0.4 gigahertz. I'm not even sure which kind of voltage you need because I tried applying a ton and still couldn't get it stable. So backing it off 100 megahertz made it completely stable. So we're gonna stick with that. So next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna come back up actually over to the graphics core frequency and overclock the APU, which is really cool with the 4700G because it actually can go quite a bit higher in terms of frequency compared to say the 3400G that we've done before. And what I found here is it's most stable at 2400 megahertz, which is really nice to see at a 1.25 volt. So last thing we're gonna dial in here on this page, since we're still on it, is we're gonna come down to our XMP profile. And we're just going to enable that. So we're gonna go down to XMP profile and turn on profile one, which as you can see now takes us up to 3000 megahertz as opposed to our original 2133. Last thing we have to do is we do have to apply some extra voltage to this chip. The 3400G we actually were able to undervolt, which was really nice, but we're not adding too much. So that isn't covered on this menu. We're gonna have to back out, hit escape, come down to advanced voltage settings. And here under V core, we're gonna set this to normal. This allows us to apply extra voltage variants like we've discussed in the 3400G video where Gigabyte has kind of this finish 
finicky thing built in. Normally you would be able to just come over to your voltage and apply like a 1.4 volt, etc. In doing so with a gigabyte board, specifically this DS3H board, we have to plug in a variance as opposed to the just plugging in a static value as you saw there. Although it will take in the BIOS, it doesn't actually apply to the system. Simple, easy way to get around with that is just doing the variance. So you come down over to the dynamic Vcore DVID and we're just gonna plug in a 0.1 value. So that takes our voltage up a 0.1 voltage variance. So that's it guys, we're gonna hit F10 to save our configuration and reboot. So at this point guys, basically, I'm gonna flip into a montage of comparing the results of this overclock, but if you're doing this for the first time, you wanna verify and you wanna make sure that your overclock is stable because even if you plug in my template, it may not work for you. It just depends on your silicone lottery luck, but I have in my 3400G overclocking video, which I'll have up in the top right hand corner for you guys to go click on, take a look at, or feel free to jump to that one after this video. I discuss the tools that I use to ensure the overclock stability. Uh, I'm not really gonna go through that again here. This is basically just kind of a showcase of the 4700G, and if you so happen to have one, what kind of benefit do you get with an overclock? So on to the montage. Let's see what those overclocking numbers get us. Alrighty guys, so the numbers are in and yeah, we made some performance uplift. Pretty awesome stuff. So it definitely proves the point of overclocking, I'd say in any case is worth it if you can get some additional performance out of your system. But you might be asking yourself, is it really worth it in a budget sense to really do this? The 4700G, as well as all the other 4000 series APUs never went publicly available to the open markets. You, the only way you could get your hands on them were through 
an OEM or through you know, buying it on eBay somehow, some way. So considering that and building up a, an additional system around that, yeah, it may not make good budget sense, but if it's something you wanna experiment, then hopefully you found the video valuable and entertaining in that sense. However, though, at the time of the release of this video, 5000 series APUs are publicly available. You can go buy them. So you don't even have to tinker around with the 4000 series. And I might have just got my hands on one. So stay tuned to a future video coming at you guys pretty soon where we explore the 5000 series APU. Thanks for tuning into this one, guys. I appreciate your time and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you.